Turner, and welcome to Rehoboth United. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with us. We are so glad you're here. My name is Pam, I'm your host. Worship service will begin shortly with an opening from one of our church leaders, followed by a few song selections from our praise team. The lyrics will be on the screen so you can sing along and engage in worship service however you feel comfortable. Afterwards, the Word of God will be brought forth. We pray that you feel welcome and enjoy today's service. <laughs> we praise God for being here this morning. For y'all ready to have church today? Did y'all come prepared for church? Ah, uh, that's right. If we had a great day on yesterday, we're gonna have a better day on the day because we're still alive. We still got the movement of our body, and we praise God for it. We just say, Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We thank God for being in the house of worship one more time so that we might hear, Thus says the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're not going to prolong the time because we know we got a word coming. God is speaking for somebody expecting the unexpected and it's coming through the word of God. If we're known for our scripture this morning, Numbers 17, Numbers 17, I read in your hearing verses 5 through 8. Numbers 17, verses 5 through 8. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod, whom I shall choose, shall blossom. And I will make a cease from me the mourning, the murmuring of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one of their prince gave him a rod apiece. For each prince won, according to their father's house, even twelve rods. And the rod of Aaron was among their rods. And Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass that on the morrow, Moses went into the tabernacle of witness. And behold, the rod of Aaron from the house of Levi was budded and brought forth buds and bloom blossom and yield almonds. May his word be blessed. Most gracious and heavenly Father, again we come, we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, Father, for this wonderful opportunity, Lord God, to be in the house of worship one more time. We thank you for your traveling mercies, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your peace that is upon us. We thank you, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit. God, we thank you in all things, Lord God. For it had not been for you, Lord, where would we be, God? We just want to thank you. We want to worship you, Lord God, for you are so worthy, Lord God. The Lamb of God, oh, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We exhort you, Lord God. We ask you, Lord, just to have your way in this place, Lord God. Bless those who are yet traveling, Lord God, to and fro, Lord God. Bless, Lord, every man, every woman, every child that should stand this morning and give your name to glory. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we know that you're going to do a work, Lord God, that we've never seen, God. We're looking for you, Lord God, to have your way, Lord God. Here, every Robert, Lord God, on the airway, Lord God, on the conference call, wherever your word has been heard, Lord God. Let the anointing, Lord God, break the yoke, Lord, break the bond, Lord God. Set the captive free, God. Father, we're looking to hear this morning, Lord God, to have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have it your way, Lord God. As we remove ourselves, Lord God, and we allow you, Lord God, to have preeminence in our life, Lord. And we have you, Lord God, to spring forth, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we look to thee, Lord God. Have your way this day, Lord God. Have your way this day, Lord God, as we just give you the praise. We give you the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Y'all ready for church? But the praise team is coming, and we're going to have church today. Amen. We're going to be free. I mean, if you don't have your shot and shoes off, I saw a young lady last night. She cooked and kicked the heels off. So if you have to kick the heels off, kick them off. But we're going to have church. At the praise team, carry us forward. Hallelujah. Oh, don't, don't stop praising. Don't stop praising. Don't stop praising. Hallelujah. Come on, we owe him our worship. Come on, we owe him our praise. It's what we were created to do, so let's do that. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, we got to go. To do what we were created to do, to fill this house with praise, to make sure we lift up a, a sincere praise that God will hear us so He can pour out His Spirit on us. We were created. created to worship, created 
So can we all lift it up? Can we put our hands together and tell God, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody in here. Let's proclaim on today.
Hallelujah. You are good. You are good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is he a good God? Is he a good God? Ah, we praise God. Hallelujah. It's, it's time for the word of God. As we do want to give honor to our pastor. First Lady Lark. Mary Lark. And our founding mother, Mother Elise Lark. If she is watching, let us know that we appreciate her. Give us some praise. And to the motherboard. And y'all say, I'm, I'm not the pastor. I don't do it like he does it. And remember, he is in the house, but this is anniversary month. And we have allowed him to sit back and just enjoy the word of the Lord from the fruits of Rehoboth. Amen. And we thank God for him allowing the vessels here at Rehoboth that have come through the lineage to give us the word of God. And we have a young man coming today who don't mind preaching at all. He can preach, he'll teach. If you ask him, he don't know how to say no. And just about anything you ask him. So we want you to pray, pray hard, that he will just let the Lord have his way. After the next election by the choir, the next voice you shall hear is that of Elder Laverne Bostick. When he shall come to the podium, we ask you to stand, please. Amen.
Jesus. What a revelation to know, to know that you know that you know that the Lord Jesus knows your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for knowing my name. What a blessing it is to be here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's just a blessing. Hallelujah. We truly thank the Lord today. Hallelujah for being here. Hallelujah. We do honor the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today. For every... All right, devil, stop it. For every provision that he has provided... Before we get started, I need to ask you to do two things for me, if you don't mind. Number one, I need you to pray for me with this message. And number two, I need you to help me thank the Lord Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. So if you will, if you will, let's have a thank you moment, hallelujah. If you will, let's have a thank you moment, hallelujah, for every answered prayer. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah, for every prayer that's being answered right now. Thank you, hallelujah, for every prayer that will be answered tomorrow. Thank you, hallelujah, for everyone that's been healed. Thank you, hallelujah. For everyone is in the healing process now. Thank you, hallelujah. For everyone that will be healed on tomorrow. Thank you, hallelujah. For the miracles that you will perform in our bodies and in our lives. Thank you, hallelujah. Oh, God, for the forgiveness over and over and over again. Thank you, hallelujah. For looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. Thank you, hallelujah, for the humiliation that you suffered because of us. Thank you, hallelujah, for the beating you took for us. Thank you, hallelujah, for the shedding of your precious blood. Hallelujah for us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, when you laid down your life, that we could be unshackled from sin. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, and you defeated the devil. Hallelujah. Thank you. Lord, this battle has been fought. Hallelujah. And the victory has been won. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, you fixed it so we could not, hallelujah, be defeated. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, let me say something. If you would just let go and let God this day, not tomorrow, this day, hallelujah. This day is your day, hallelujah. If you would cast your cares upon him, there's going to be a turnaround in your life. This day, hallelujah, there's going to be a spiritual shift in your life today, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody is leaving here today knowing that your life will never be the same again because you had decided that you are victorious and that you are more than a conqueror. So come on, let's do this. Let's speak it out into the atmosphere. Speak it into the atmosphere. Let's say this, I am victorious. I am more than a conqueror. Again, I am victorious. I am more than a conqueror. Hallelujah.
do honor today our pastor and First Lady Frankie Lauren. Hallelujah. Mother Elise Lauren, our founding mother in her absence. Mother Lauren, we love you. Hallelujah. To Lady Mary Lauren, to the elders, the ministers, evangelists, and missionaries, and deacons. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for his love for you. We honor you today. Hallelujah. And to our members, visitors, Facebook friends, and well wishers, the peace and joy of the Lord Jesus continue to be your companion every day. Hallelujah. You know, when you look or when you ever hear anything about the book of Ezekiel, when that name Ezekiel is mentioned, our minds will somehow go to Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of the wheel. Or it will go to Ezekiel in the valley of dry bones. And sometimes we can connect with the song. Well, the toe bones connected to the foot bone. The foot bones connected to your, hallelujah, heel bone. Your heel bones connected to your leg bone. Do you know what I'm talking about? That song, hallelujah. Well, today, I will not disappoint you. Today, we want to share with you briefly from the subject, there is life in the valley of death. There is life in the valley of death. Our scripture text will come from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. And if you will, please stand, if you can, for the reading of God's word. Ezekiel 37 verses 1 through 14. And the word read on this wise. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them around about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry and he said unto me son of man can these bones live and I answered O Lord God thy noise Again he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them about above, and there was no breath in them. Then said, I, then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and said to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up on their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. 
Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves. O my people, and brought you out of the graves and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Lord God, as I come this hour to relay your word, Lord, put me at ease and give me clarity of thought. Allow the anointing to fall fresh on me that it will make preaching easy. Now, Lord, as I step behind your word, I ask that you step forward and use these lips of clay to speak your word to your people today. Lord, give every listener exactly what they need to hear, that they will be empowered to stand against every trick of the devil and that they would prosper in your will and in your way. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Ezekiel is the author of the book that carries his name, and we know this from uh, chapter 1, verse 1. Ezekiel's name means God will strengthen. Ezekiel was a priest, the son of Buzzai, and he was of the tribe of Levi. He was also a prophet, and he was commissioned to be a watchman over the house of Israel. You can find that in Ezekiel uh, chapter 3, verse 17. Ezekiel's ministry filled the gap between Daniel's ministry and Jeremiah's. Ezekiel was taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, during the time of Judah's kings Jehoiakim and Jehoiachin. Ezekiel went into captivity around about age 25, and he had been in captivity for five years when God showed him the vision of the dry bones. And he prophesied between years 600 B.C. and 570 B.C. If you note in chapter 1, verse 1, now it came to pass in the 30th year. Now it is believed that this was how old Ezekiel was, 30. And if you would notice, 30 was also the age when priests could begin to prophesy. You find that in Numbers uh, chapter 4, verse 3. Joseph began to rule over Egypt at age 30, Genesis 41 and 46. David began his reign at age 30, 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 4. It was also the age of 30 that Jesus began his ministry, Luke chapter 3, verse 23. In today's message, God transported Ezekiel in a vision to the valley that was full of bones, nothing but bones. But why did God take Ezekiel to a valley that was full of dead, dried, bleached out bones, a place where there was nothing but death with no hope whatsoever of life? Why did he do that? Because this vision in the valley of bones there was no hope of life. Everything was dead. Now, this was exactly the same state that his people Israel was in because of sin. They had no hope. It was as if they were dead. They were just like the dried bones. It was as though they were in their graves. <clears throat> they had no hope whatsoever. But listen. God was going to give the peop his people hope, the hope that they needed. And Ezekiel was the man that God would use to give his people the message of hope. 
the message that they needed. And here's how God did it. In this vision in the valley of dry bones, <clears throat> God had Ezekiel to survey the bones. He went from side to side, back and forth, around the bones, and what he observed was there were very many bones in this valley, and they were very dry. Now, the scene in this valley was nerve-wracking, unsettling, but the hand of God was upon Ezekiel and gave him the strength to endure. Now, it appeared as if a great battle had taken place, and the only thing remaining in the valley was skeletons of the fallen soldiers. But let's remember something. <coughs> Excuse me. In Bible times, when soldiers fought against each other, the victorious soldiers would often strip the valuables from their slain and then leave their bodies unburied. And then in remote places where there were, had been a, 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 a serious battle, skeletons sometimes remained for years and years after until the vultures had stripped all the flesh and completely scattered the bones, or either the bones surrendered to the elements. This was a scary image, but listen. This image also has a lot of relevance for us today. Listen, in Jeremiah chapter 25 and 33, the Bible says this, and the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered, nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. This entire world is going to be a dark valley of dry bones that will someday come to life for the judgment. Now, in this valley of dry bones, there was no sign of life, no movement, no flesh on the bones, no breathing, no blood. There was no hope of life. The bones was dried and bleached out by the sun. Everything was dead. This was truly Death Valley. So listen, let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a place of hopelessness? where everything you tried just died and there was no hope nowhere for you. So you just buried your bones along with all your dreams and hopes. Have you ever been that way? Nothing seemed to go right. Everything just seemed to die. So listen. After Ezekiel's surveillance of the Valley of Dry Bones, God asked Ezekiel a question. He said this, Son of man, can these dry bones live? Now listen, I want to I give you a question to consider. If you note, Ezekiel was referred to over 90 times as Son of man. Now, was son of man a way that the Hebrews used when they were referring to human beings? Or was it because Ezekiel was an individual of the created order? Think about it. So listen at this. Let me give you another little note to help you think. Jesus referred to himself over 80 times as the son of man. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> so as Ezekiel surveyed the valley of dry bones, he was asked, can these bones live? Now listen, Ezekiel did not say, yes, they can live. But Ezekiel did not say, no, they cannot live. But he ans the answer was this. O oh Lord God, thy knowest. <laughs> you, you know what? Sometimes it's better to just leave things with God Almighty. And see, understanding this, see, Ezekiel was okay with allowing such knowledge 
to remain with God Almighty. But let me ask you a question. I want to get you involved today. So I'm asking you these questions. So, so this, if God would ask you the same question, can these dry bones live? What would be your answer? So you said yes. That's your final answer. Okay. We'll accept that as your final answer. Yes. So listen. If you were the first person on the scene of an accident and you saw somebody lying motionlessly on the ground and you might think perhaps there's some hope and you probably would even try a little bit of CPR, right? To revive the person. But listen, let me ask you this. But if you saw a skeleton lying on the ground, you would not even consider mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, would you? You would say, it's just dead bones. There's no hope. It's already dead, and the only thing we can do is bury it. Am I correct? But wait a minute, you just told me you would tell God, yes, the dry bones can live. thinking straight. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. So listen, what God wants us to learn from this story is that nothing is too hard for him. What may appear hopeless and dead to you and I, it's just a great field of possibilities for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Mary asked how can this be? And the angel Gabriel said, told her this, nothing is impossible with God. And when the disciples asked, who then can be saved? Look what Jesus said. With men, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. God never want us to lose faith in the fact that he can give even if it appears dead and there's no kind of situation, no hope whatsoever, God can bring it to life. I want you to remember that. Your situation seems hopeless and dead. God can bring it to life. So now listen, now listen. So Ezekiel is asked now to speak to these dry bones. Now you know what? Preaching to dry bones will seem like a waste of time because skeletons don't listen. Amen. But we sometimes forget the incredible vital power of God's word. If God can speak matter into existence with just a word, if he can make man out of clay or make a woman out of a rib, then it stands to reason. God can also cause spiritual death, I mean the spiritual dead, to hear. So the dry bones could hear. Amen. Because God's word is so potent and so powerful that it infuses new life into that which appears dead. <clears throat> Whenever the Lord Jesus speaks, things happen. <clears throat> Do I need to say that again? When the Lord Jesus speaks, things happen. Look at this in, in Mark uh, chapter 1, verses 40. The Bible said that when Jesus said to the leper, be cleansed, what happened? He was immediately clean. Amen. John 5 and 5, when Jesus said, get up and walk to a man that had not walked for 38 years, immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. When Jesus speaks, Things happen. Amen. Look at this. Look at this. In Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 5, God says, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you. Listen at this. You know, bones are almost always associated with death. Am I right? right. Yet, the Bible tells of a story in which bones were a source of life. 2 Kings, chapter 13. And the prophet Elisha was sick, and the sickness caused his death. And they buried him. 
And sometime later, raiding bands of Moabites, as they often did, invaded the country. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. So one day some men were burying a man and they spotted these raiders. So they threw the man into Elijah's tomb. Watch it now. And when the dead man's body touched Elisha's bone, the man came alive, stood up, and walked out on his own two feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is life in the bones. Glory. Now, I know, listen to this. A lot of people will say, well, you know, that happened back in the Bible days, and that ain't happening today. Others will say, man, that never happened. Somebody throwing another dead man on a dead man's bones, that ain't happened. And some will say that's just a story told in the Bible. That's all it is, just a story. And others will say it's a metaphor. People will say this, nothing like that can happen today. But listen at this. Let me, let me share this with you. If you will, allow me to share this story. And this was in Reader's Digest. Listen at this. A family in which the daughter contracted a form of leukemia that would ultimately kill her unless she received a bone marrow transplant. And because she had an unusual blood type, it was very difficult to find a donor. Now listen to what happened. Man, God is so different from us. Listen to what happened. So the parents did something that was unbelievable, almost unbelievable. They began praying to have another child, oh my God, with the same rare blood type. They hoped the second child would offer a short, <clears throat> would, at a short period of time, would be able to provide the bone marrow needed for their daughters with leukemia. So listen at this. Things were somewhat complicated in this matter. Because of the fact this was an older couple. And the man had already had a vasectomy. Lord have mercy, it's getting tougher. Not only will the doctors need to reverse the vasectomy, which is a iffy procedure in itself, but their new baby would need to have the same rare blood type as the older sister. Well, listen at this. I told you God is something else. When God speaks, things going to happen. Listen at this. It worked. The main surgeon was a success. The couple was able to conceive again, and they gave birth to a second daughter who had the appropriate blood type, and after 14 months, this little girl provided enough bone marrow from her hip to give a transplant that saved her older sister's life. I'm telling you, God can do some, <laughs> God can do some things, hallelujah, hallelujah. God can do some things that just startle the mind, amen? But let's go back to Ezekiel. In Ezekiel chapter 37 says this, so I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. No bones went to the wrong body. Ain't that amazing? Now, you think about this for a moment. These bones had been out in the field that's open. Vultures had moved them everywhere, trying to eat the flesh off them. But when God had his man speak, That sound and rattling sound was the bones trying to find its partner so they could come together. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Look how God worked things out. No bone went to the wrong body. Hallelujah. Jesus. When God's people preach the truth, it's going to cause a rattling. Things are going to happen. Sometimes it will bring revival. Hallelujah. And sometimes it will bring opposition or persecution. Sometimes it brings both. Hallelujah. This one thing for sure, though, 
when the truth is proclaimed, there will be a lot of shaking. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, after these bones came together in their appropriate position, and Ezekiel continued preaching, the Bible says that the sinew and tendons began to take their place. Lord, have mercy. God is putting it in, doing it in order. Next, the skin was put in position. Notice now, God does everything in order. Amen. Even Corinthians 14 and 40 says, let all things be done decently and in order order. Amen? Amen. Now look at this. Now at this point all the body parts were in their proper place. Amen? The bones, the muscles, the skin were in position but still there was no life. The brains was in the head but there was no thinking. The lungs were in there but no, the body was not breathing. The heart was in place, hallelujah, but there was no beating, hallelujah. So now, Ezekiel is surrounded, not with thousands of disconnected bones, but now Ezekiel is surrounded with an army of cold bodies. Now listen at this, cold bodies. This is the condition, this condition, rather, actually describe how some of the churches are. I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about the church round the corner, round the bend. Amen. They have, they have everything in place, but there's no spiritual life. Amen. Look at this. Revelations 3 and 1, it speaks of the church of Sardis. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. Yeah, you got a church, you got a name, you, you got it propped up and everything else. You got everything in place, but you're dead. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. Help us today, Lord Jesus. This condition also, I'm talking, uh, let's talk about the church. Let me bring it a little bit closer and a little bit tighter. This condition also describes some of our individual lives. Oh, y'all getting quiet on me now. Don't do that. Listen. Watch this. Watch this. We get up. We dress up. We get our Bible and come to church. We set up. We shut up and hope everybody would hurry up. Hallelujah. And hope. Oh, God, look at this. Hoping everybody would hurry up. So that we could get up and go. Lord, have mercy. There is no spiritual life. So we have got to pull it together. Hallelujah. And make sure we don't fall into this position. In verse 9, in verse 9 of Ezekiel 37, God told Ezekiel to speak to the wind and tell breath to come from the four winds and breathe on these bones that they may live. So when Ezekiel spoke to the wind, breath came and breathed on the bones, and they lived, and they stood up on their feet, an exceeding great army. Amen. Now, 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 this was a work of revival, restoring life to something that was at one time had life. This was not the creation of life from nothing. It was the restoration of life to something that had been dead all along. And sometimes we need revival, amen? amen. You are not where you, where you want to be, hallelujah. So we need to ask God for a revival in our lives, amen? amen. In verse 11, God says to Ezekiel, Son of man, these bones, now God is explaining this whole scenario of why God took Ezekiel to the valley of dry bones. He said this, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we are cut off from our parts. Notice, the word said, these bones are the whole house of Israel, right? 
not only those from the kingdom of Judah, but the, rest of the restoration would include those from the northern kingdom of Israel, which fell to the Assyrians some 150 years ago. So listen, God has no time, so to speak. So here it is, the northern kingdom had been captured some 150 years ago, but now God is speaking, I am going to bring them together. Hallelujah. So you can't be complete if one half is scattered somewhere else. Amen. So listen at this. In Ezekiel 37, verse 14, it gives us hope. It's a message to you that God's word and his spirit can bring life to any situation, to any soul, no matter how dead and how hopeless it might be. So listen at this. Some of us, we're walking around in a life of hopelessness. But God wants you to know no matter how hopeless it seems, no matter how dead it might be, no matter how long it has been dead, God wants you to know, hallelujah, that he can pull it all together Amen. for you. Amen. Just for you. Think about that for a minute. God wants to do this just for you. Listen, you might be saying, but Ella Boston, you, you, you just don't know how dead my situation is. Yes, I know. I understand. I know that God can bring life to anything that is dead if you want it to live. Amen. See, now God's going to not force you to make it live. You got to want this thing, amen, because you got to play your part, amen. amen. Look, in the book of John, chapter 11, remember when Martha and Mary sent word to Jesus that Lazarus was sick? That Jesus waited two more days before he went to see about Lazarus. Now, on the way to see Lazarus, in verse 14, Jesus tells the disciples, look, Lazarus dead. He gone. He ain't living no more. He dead. And now when Jesus arrived in Bethany, he went to the cave where they had buried Lazarus. And he said to them, take away the stone." Now listen at Martha's response. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, listen, by this time he stink. He been dead four days. Look at this, look at this. And in verse 40, Jesus said this to Martha, and he's saying this to us. Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou should see the glory of God? So listen, the key word here is if thou wouldest believe. Those are the key words. And see, you can't have it if you don't believe it. Amen? Sometimes we're in such a hurry until we forget to believe God. Now, you're in a hurry when you forget to believe God. But when you believe, things happen. When you believe God, things is going to happen. Look at this. Look at this in verse 43. Jesus cried with a loud voice, and said this, Lazarus, come forth. Now listen. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. Listen, let me tell you something. Jesus want to loose you out of some of your dead situations. So why carry around dead situations when you have a God want to free you of your dead situations? Amen? Amen. Just because it is dead and buried don't mean that it has to stay dead and buried. If you believe in God, things will happen. If you believe God, your dead situation can come to life. If you believe God, you can dig up your hopes and dreams and breath will breathe on them and life will spring forth. But you got to believe. You got to believe this. Hallelujah. Listen, in my closing, in my closing, don't let the devil tell you that you are cut off and hopeless. 
Don't let the devil make you feel dried up and useless. Don't let the devil dare, don't let the devil dare you to. Or let him dare tell you that you have been dead in a situation for so long that God himself has forgotten about you. Amen. Don't you dare let the devil tell you that. Amen. Amen. Listen at this. Now perhaps you remember this. In the book of Numbers, chapter 17, verse 8, I want to show you that just because it's dead and buried, it don't have to stay there. In the book of Numbers, chapter 17, where the rod of Aaron, which was an old dried up walking stick, that had been dead for a long time. But God caused the walking stick, hallelujah, of error to come to life. Not only did it come to life, but the thing began to bud again, and it budded forth buds and blooms and blossoms. Can you imagine an old dead almond walking stick? God brings it back to life, and that thing began to bud and bud flowers and then it began to produce almonds so let me just tell you something if God can do that to a dead walking stick what on earth can he do for you his children that's living but just in a dead situation listen if you believe that he will bring that which is dead to life as a church as a church God can revive us and make us as an army that will be part of his end time remnant that's going to help build the kingdom. Ezekiel tells us uh, in verses 12 and 14 that God's people will be raised up and brought into the promised land. See, we ain't got there yet, but we are looking forward to this promised land. But even before that, the Lord wants us to raise up God want to raise up an army of spirit-filled people who will expand the kingdom. See, are you ready for God to raise you up and you begin to put your gifts together so we can do some things for God and build this kingdom? Amen. 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 Whatever the cause, the message in this sermon is that God can send new life to our dry bone situation. Amen. If you can believe God, your dead situation will not have to remain dead even though you have buried it. Remember, Lazarus, when he was dead, if you can believe God, your hopeless situation need not to remain hopeless. If you can believe God, your dried up situation can be revived and you can thrive in God. If you can believe God, we can raise up as an extended army of God. If you can believe God, hallelujah, as a church, we have signs and wonders following us. If you can believe God, hallelujah, we can lay hands on the sick and they recover. If you can believe God, his name can cast out devils. He can, we can speak with new tongues. If you can believe God, we will find new strength. If you can believe God, we will soar on wings like eagles. If you can believe God, we will run and not grow weary. We will walk and not faint. In the final closing, you cannot go this new way with God leading you unless you keep your eyes on Jesus. You cannot keep your eyes on Jesus until you can believe that God, if you can, you cannot follow Jesus if you can't keep your, if you can't keep your, you can't keep your eyes on Jesus if we can't believe that when God speak, things will begin to happen. Amen. God want all of us to know that with him, there are so many impossibilities in our lives that God want to make them possible. But we can never see them because we are residing in our own valley of dry bones. Hallelujah. God wants you to know the victory has already been won and that you have to keep fighting. You don't have to keep fighting these little battles, but you can speak to your mountain and tell your mountain where to go. 
So if you are tired of living in the valley of your own dry bones, if you are tired of burying the ideas, your ideas and hopes and dreams, we want to ask you to come down to the altar. See, there's a place God wants you to come where God can elevate you. There's something that you need to do. If you are tired of being fearful of laying hands on the sick and they're recovering, come down to the altar. If you are tired of having dry bo a dry bone bank account, come down to the altar. If you are tired of not having a healthy body, Come down to the altar. You see, God gave Ezekiel something to do. Just like now he's giving you something to do. But if you don't come to where God can meet you at the point of your need, you will keep whatever problems you have in your life. Sometimes we can get prayers answered because we will just get up and come down to the altar because you are being obedient. So come on down to this altar so that you can fix your focus on God. somebody to leave here today a new person. God wants somebody to unload themselves of the dry bones. God wants somebody, hallelujah, to look to him, hallelujah, so that you can recover, hallelujah. God wants you to be in his living army. God wants to shed you of all your hopelessness but there's something you have to do. As the ministers come forth to minister to you in prayer, I want to ask you that you would tell the minister exactly what you want God to do for you. Whatever it is, this is your day. Whatever it is, this is your day.
one thing. No matter how dead your situations are, and when they seem hopeless, I want you to understand that the adversary is going to try to make you think that you can't make it. But I want you to push and push until you break forth. God is going to deliver you, but he's going to do that in his time. And his time is that he knows that you are ready to be delivered. Father God, we thank you, oh God, for every person that came down this morning for prayer. Thank you for delivering them, God. Thank you for setting them free from the bondage, oh God, that held them down. Thank you, God, hallelujah, that you've renewed hope, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, God, that we can count on you. Thank you, God, that we know, hallelujah, that you are a deliverer. God, we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, we thank you now. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's give God a praise for the man of God and for the word that went forth. There's life in the valley of death. It may look like death, but it's not there. Like we thank God for the word and the preach word that the man gave in the vessel that God used. At this time, we're going to ask if we have any students, teachers, school workers to come. That we might have prayer as they begin school. If we have any students, Elder Mac, will you come give a prayer for our school? If you work at the school, if you're a teacher, student, custodian, Please come that we might have prayer over you that God will cover you as we go through another year and protect you because there's danger going on in the school and we want to not have that. Let us look unto the Lord. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, as we come before your presence, we thank you, O Lord Jesus, for these precious little ones that are about to embark upon another school year. Lord, lovingly, I've always called them school soldiers. That's their job. That's their calling for now in their life to go to school and to matriculate and to be the best that they can be in their life. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Father God, for our teachers, faculty, principals, school bus drivers, those who work, O oh Father God, in counseling. O oh Father God, that you will bless them this school year. We want to get ahead of the curve and rebuke that murdering spirit that permeates not only this land, but around the world. That think it's okay to go in and snuff out young lives before it even began. We defy the devil. We cast him down on our feet right now. Every demonic trick, snare, and trap of the enemy set to come against our children and our public schools, private schools. We cancel the plan right now. We speak protection, your blood covering over these precious little ones. 
bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that before the assailer, the murdering spirit can get into school, he'll be stopped in his tracks in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, bless those who will be sitting in classroom. Help them to see that they're there, they get their lesson. Give mom and dad that extra patience and care that they need, oh, Father God. Because everything is not all done in the classroom. Some things must be done at home. So we pray that you give them the strength, the patience, and the endurance to help them. Because the work they put in now will be a blessing upon their life later. So God bless them. Open their understanding. Help them to grasp, understand, and retain what they learn. Someone said if you don't put nothing in, you can't get nothing out. So bless them, Father God, in their studies. From elementary to the college level, bless them in Jesus' name. And for those old ones that are going back to further our education, bless them, Lord. They can do it. I did it. They can do it. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Provide those needs, those things that they stand in need of. Make a way out of no way. When the problem presents itself, I pray that the solution be there. I pray that the money already be on the way. I pray, Father God, that you will put it in their hand at the time that they need it. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for a good day, for a good year, and for good people. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. thank God for the service. We thank God for all those who are listening through conference call or watch through Facebook. Let's tell them thank you. Give them a praise for those who are listening this morning. We thank God. We hope something that was said will inspire you, Lord, to look to the Lord and know that he can do it, even if it looks dead. We'd like to say thank you for watching us. Thank all of you being here, for God has a blessing. And as Pastor Jesus say, we love you, and ain't nothing you can do with that about it. So we love you all. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you for being a part of our worship service. We pray that you are encouraged by today's message. If you feel led, visit our website, rehobothunited.org, to learn ways you can give. To stay connected with us throughout the week, follow us on social media. Use the handle at Rehoboth United to find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We believe that God has a place just for you. You are special in His eyes. Our hope is that you feel His love stronger today than ever before. We are believing God for a supernatural shift. Thanks again for being with us. See you next time.